Hi, welcome to Give Me Some Sugar. My name is Rachel. I'm a certified diabetes care and education specialist and person with type 1 diabetes of over 20 years. Today we are talking about exercise and how to keep a steady blood sugar during your workouts. People with diabetes typically experience one of two things when they are working out. For one, a lot of probably the majority of people with diabetes see is the drop during a workout or after a workout. This is because your body is using glucose as energy and stored glycogen in your muscles. And once it runs out in a person with diabetes, then there's nothing left. And that's when you see that blood sugar drop. Another thing that a lot of people may experience while they're working out is a spike in their blood sugar. And this is caused by an adrenaline rush. You'll see this in high intensity workouts like resistance training or competitive sports, a soccer game or something like that where you're feeling really hyped and ready to go kick some soccer butt. And you may see this adrenaline rush happen which will cause your blood sugar to spike pretty significantly and eventually it'll start to come down. A little different than like just a regular blood sugar spike. It's a pretty f quick little uh, spike and then it comes down pretty quickly after that. So both of these outcomes are a pain in the ass when you're trying to work out you're trying to do the right thing and get your workout in and feel really good and instead you have to stop your workout to give yourself insulin or chug a juice box and so what i want you to do first is pause this video and go to my website to download the free pdf that i made for you that will help you kind of figure out what types of exercise and the duration of those exercises does to your blood sugar and figure out what your pre-workout blood sugar should be and maybe how much of a snack you need to eat before or during that workout to keep a steady blood sugar. That PDF can be downloaded at www.givemesomesugar.coach slash exercise plan. So pause the video, go get that, and you can follow along while we talk about it on this video. The American Association of Diabetes Educators recommends that people using insulin keep their blood sugar levels above 100 milligrams per deciliter. If you have trouble feeling hypoglycemia, aim for keeping your blood glucose above 120 milligrams per deciliter. So let's say personally, I notice that my blood sugar drops 30 milligrams per deciliter during a 30 minute power walk. My goal is to keep my blood sugar above 110 um, I wear a sensor and I can feel my lows and I just feel like 110 would be a good place to end up after my workout. So to figure out my pre-walk glucose level, I'm gonna add 110 to 30, which equals 140 milligrams per deciliter. This is ideally where my blood sugar should be prior to taking my power walk. If my blood sugar is a little lower than 140 before my walk, I will consider eating a snack with about 10 to 30 grams of carbohydrates and a good amount of protein and fiber just to keep that blood sugar super steady during my walk. My favorite type of snack just to bring that up and keep it steady is something like unsweetened yogurt with fruit or possibly a protein smoothie. If you are the type of person that tends to spike during a workout, this can be a little bit trickier. You'll basically do the opposite of what we just did. So let's say you notice a spike of 50 during every single one of your volleyball games. So we're gonna subtract 120 milligrams per deciliter by 50 milligrams per deciliter. For some people starting at 70 may be kind of terrifying, so talk to your doctor about whether a small bolus prior to an adrenaline prone workout will work for you. Just kind of depends on what you're comfortable with and how consistent that adrenaline spike is. Now let's talk about preventing lows during the workout itself. So you have a plan for where your blood sugar should be prior to starting your workout and so now we just want to talk about keeping it there so that you don't crash and have to stop your workout. If you're doing mild exercise like yoga or walking, it's good to try and consume 10 grams every 30 minutes and you may not need anything. For moderate exercise, think five to 10 grams every 15 minutes. And for those high intensity workouts like a run, you may want to eat or drink 15 grams every 15 minutes. This really varies person to person. 
Personally, I don't need anything when I'm working out, but it just kind of depends on what your blood sugar does. So experiment with granola bars, protein balls, and dates. These are all good options for a quick pick-me-up during your workout if it's needed. And obviously, this goes without saying, but have your go-to low treatments alongside you during your workout, such as juice, applesauce pouches, glucose gel is my personal favorite, and um, glucose tabs and please have a glucagon pen handy as well, just in case. This is the process that I use personally to figure out my pre-workout blood sugar goals, as well as the process that my clients use. And we really do have a lot of great luck with it. It allows us to stay steady during our workouts and feel a little bit more confident when starting them. I encourage you to give it a try and let me know if you have any questions about it. Again, that free PDF worksheet is on my website at www.givemesomesugar.coach slash exercise plan. And I will see you in my next video.